Hello everyone, I'm Steven and you're watching Steven Love Science and in today's video we're going to discuss the proper use of the chi-square test, a very useful mathematical approach to determine the validity of a genetic hypothesis. And the rationale behind this is that we're looking at the deviation between our expected data and our observed data to determine if our hypothesis is consistent with the data that we observe. And therefore, whether or not it's subsequently going to be consistent with the chi-square distribution, which we're not going to discuss in this video. But what does the chi what is the chi-square formula? The chi-square formula states chi-square is equal to the sum, so sigma, that's what that sign is, the sum of O minus E squared divided by E, where O are the numbers of observed data and E is the number of are the numbers of and expected data from the hypothesis. So I think we're ready to try an example now where we're going to apply the chi-square formula. So in this example, in fruit flies, curved wings are recessive to straight wings, and ebony body is recessive to gray body. A cross was made between true breeding flies with curved wings and gray bodies, the flies with straight wings and ebony bodies. The F1 offspring were then mated to flies with curved wings and ebony bodies to produce an F2 generation. So let's look at part A of this problem. Part A is asking to diagram the genotypes of this cross starting with the parental generation and ending with the F2 generation. So the first thing I like to do is to set up my notation. So right now I'm setting up notation for what I'm representing the genotypes for curved wings and so on and so forth. So before we do any crosses, let's set forth this notation. So I think now we're ready to do the parental cross where we're mating a fly with curved wings and gray bodies with a fly with straight wings and ebony bodies. And we can figure out the genotypes by looking back at the problem, but I'm assuming you can already do that. If not, check out my other videos. So by mating these flies, we find that the F1 generation is heterozygous with normal bodies and with normal wings and gray bodies. So there will be heterozygous. And now for part two of this, the F1 offspring is crossed to flies with curved wings and ebony bodies. This is a test cross, meaning recessive, homozygous, recessive for both of it. So we find that we then get, so we find that the F1 offspring is crossed to flies with curved wings and ebony bodies, and we're doing that cross right now. So curved wings and ebony bodies is homozygous recessive. And we find that the F2 offspring that we get as a result of this will be a one to one to one ratio of flies doing the Punnett square with the genotypes that I'm writing now and the phenotypes of normal wings, gray body, normal wings, ebony body, curved wings, gray body, curved wings, ebony body. So let's just recap briefly. The F1 generation, which resulted from the parental cross, was heterozygous with normal straight wings and gray bodies with the phenotype C plus, C, E plus, E. And then we found that the F2 offspring were in a one to one to one ratio with these genotypes. And now we've collected sufficient enough data. Now that we know the ratio of the F2 generation, which is the generation that we're talking about with the chi-square, we can finally begin to do the chi-square because we can now get what we would expect, our expected outcomes using the ratios that we obtained doing the Punnett square. So in a second, we'll be able to do that. So. But in order to do the Punnett square, we need both expected, which we'll get in a second, and observed. So these are the observed outcomes for each of the phenotypes that was obtained experimentally in the F2 generation that we're then going to input into the chi-square. So we know now there was a total number of 444 offspring. So that's important, and we'll get to that in a second. So now that we know there are 444 offspring and that the F2 generation, hypothetically, in theory, should be in a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one ratio, that's the same as each one having an equal probability of one over four.
So we can then apply that 1 over 4 probability to the 444 um, sets of data, data sets that were obtained in the experimentally. So we can now apply this hypothetical one-fourth probability to the, to the experimental data. So there was a total of 444 um, observed outcomes, and we can use the one-fourth probability to determine that technically 111 of those should be um, consistent with each one of the individual phenotypes and if that number was different, we can now enter that into the chi-square formula, which I'm doing right now. But if that number was different, say the probability was one-fourth for one genotype, one-third for another, you would have to enter this different. In, in this case, the expected outcome is 111 flies for each, for each um, genotype, but in reality, um, there could be problems where you get a different probability for each genotype. In this case, it all happened to turn out 1 to 1 to 1, but you could have got a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 or something like that. So now we're just crunching the numbers here, and we should get a result. So the summation, the sigma, is what confuses a lot of people, but really that's just the sum of, of the individual um, chi-square operations. So we find that we get a chi-square value of 0 0.49, but that, that's just a raw number. So what we have to do, we have to put it into the chi-square table, which we will get to in a second. But before we can put it into the chi-square table, we have to figure out how many degrees of freedom we have in this problem. So the degrees of freedom is equal to n minus one. So in this case, n are our four possible phenotypes um, minus one. So that's usually the case in most genetics problems. You'll get a degrees of freedom equal to three. So the data that we collected is likely to occur with a standard deviation of 10 to um, 15 percent, 10 to 20 percent. Sorry, five to five to 20, the standard deviation. So we can now accept this hypothesis that we obtain. So our hypothesis is consistent with the collected data. So does this mean that the hypothesis is correct? So our hypothesis was correct because it's consistent with chi-square um, graph, no? Not necessarily. See, the chi-square graph only tells us whether or not our data is consistent with our hypothesis, not whether or not our hypothesis is correct. Thanks for watching Stephen Love Science.